So here it is. It looks really neat actually, and it seems like it glued down, but I haven't really tested it. Like I haven't taken a knife and tried to lift it and, and like pull it off, peel it off, cut it off. And I'm not going to. I only did this, you know, one experiment. If this hadn't been such a seat of the pants late in the day kind of experiment, I probably would have done some test pieces like on, you know, just gotten a stick or something and put something on it and then been able to test it and mess with it a little bit, but I didn't. I would like to see see a little bit more down here too and I think the way I would do that is take a metal plate oil it stick it in this slot and then just build up on both sides here uh, just to make this also more of a belly to make this overall like more of a fish um, oval shape in this direction probably just leave the thickness here it's got a nice interesting lumpy texture it looks neat I think I'm gonna Go ahead and sand the side here a little bit just to see what that looks like. I also want to get rid of the rest of this varnish on there. Mostly scraping and then we'll sand it a little bit. I'm real interested in the, the casing glue and what's possible with it. I've, I've been wanting to spend more time messing with it because it also makes a good paint. So that's really interesting, but just figuring out like how to make it better. I'm not sure why it wouldn't mix up for me this time. In the past, that hasn't really been a problem. And I think the main thing I'm worried about with this, this project right here is that this didn't have enough glue. Like I had to add water and then just like stick an immersion blender in there. Like I said, it was an emergency, you know, I'm running out of time. So I just did the quickest thing I could think of. But it made it thinner than I wanted, and I, I'm thinking it should be more like paper mache, where it's like a thin paste, and it was it was a little too liquid. So that's one thing I would do different. Like I said, instead of testing this, I'm just going to use it. Well, now I'm scraping the edge of it right now, and it seems to be holding up pretty nicely. You could use different colors of wood, different types of wood. It might look really neat. So there's other small things I might do on here. I might do them right now, actually. Um, some of them are just, you know, not that important or preference or aesthetics or whatever. But other ones are not, you know, negotiable. Like I, this, this handle is really not that great when it's round because nothing to keep the handle from turning in your hand. And it also, just by feel, you don't have a feeling of where the this plane of the knife is and how the edge is oriented if you just if you're not looking at it and you're holding it this tucks into this hollow in the palm which is important and then yeah this really could use a little bit of filling out right here so to me that's really kind of a an important thing not that you couldn't use the knife and and do okay and get used to it and not notice that most of the time but it definitely is a real significant improvement Here's some 400 grit, just to see what it looks like. Just gonna round that off a bit. I don't want any of these sharp edges. Just round all this off with some sandpaper. Nice. I just don't like how sharp this edge is right here. So I'm gonna take my knife I would never hold this like this if I wasn't trying to get it on the camera. I would hold it way closer to my body and stuff like that. Okay, I'm just gonna sit here for a minute and get more of this varnish off and get this exactly how I want it. And then I'll, we'll, we'll get back to this in a minute. This is much better now to me. Uh, I don't have this stupid sharp factory edge thing there. That feels good to get rid of. Um, it, the whole thing is just feels better. I have this hump to fill in my palm right here. Got rid of all this rough edge here. It looks way better, honestly. The tip more in line with like the center of the whole knife. If you were to average out the center of the knife, it's, it's got kind of a curve, but if you were to straighten it out, now the tip is closer to the center line of the knife, the whole knife. And I can work with the tip now. You know, I could do fine work way easier, better for making opening cuts and skinning because I don't have this tip that's literally like sticking down, trying to like cut down into the meat. I can uh, skim under the skin better. 
Again, I would like to get rid of a little bit of this belly and I might just grab a file. I mean, that's really not a big deal. It's probably a 10 minute filing job or less. It only took me, I think about three minutes to do this tip here. And uh, we're just gonna oil this to see what it looks like just a little bit here. I don't wanna oil the whole handle. I think I would uh, kind of give it a good soaking in linseed oil normally, but since I might go ahead and do this again on this side, sooner than later. I don't want to saturate this with oil. I just want it to be raw wood. So we're going to take a close-up look at this and oil that to see what it looks like. And then I'm going to show you one more cool trick you can do with this knife. And then I'm just going to use it. I'm going to throw it in my pocket and carry it a lot and use it and use it hard whenever, you know, I'm not gonna go test it and use it hard on purpose and try to break it or something stupid like that. I mean, I've broken a lot of knives. I know more or less how not to break them, but I also don't baby them. Like if, if I need to do something, you know, I'm probably just gonna do it. And the nice thing about this is it's an affordable knife. Like I'm not, I'm not a person that buys new knives normally. It's not that I wouldn't consider buying new knives, but typically I've been more of a flea market kind of knife person, but this is affordable. And this is the kind of knife I like It's because I can, you know, recommend this to like noobs and they're the only one that need my recommendation. You know, if you don't, if you know what you're doing and you know what you like, then you don't, you don't need me to tell you what to get. A knife is one of the most basic tools, so something I could recommend to people that's not just a small pocket knife. Pretty neat. I actually really like the way it looks and I like the way it feels with this little bit of texture. It's like real smooth, but it's got some texture that you know is gonna dig into your hand a little bit for grip. I could definitely see doing this whole handle, like even, you know, maybe scraping the sides down a little thinner. Yeah, just doing the whole handle just because the texture is neat and it because it looks neat. But uh, we'll see how it holds up. The thing about the cheese glue is it's not necessarily waterproof. You know, it's, it's close, I think, and it's water resistant, but waterproof might be stretching it a little bit. And I also don't know what oil will do to the cheese glue over time, if that'll damage it or not. Yeah, all big experiment. So far, so good though, it's pretty neat the way it turned out. Okay, one more trick and then we're gonna sign off. I'm always pushing the idea that people should scrape more with their knives. It just really expands the options you have with a knife if you use it for scraping as well as for slicing. Scraping is actually used quite a bit in woodworking. I don't think it's as popular as it used to be, but there are, you know, wood scrapers made just for that purpose. And some of those have a bevel and uh, some of them are square. Well, the back of this knife, even as it comes from the factory, at least this one, actually makes a really good scraper. And you got this kind of convenient handle as you can see, this is no joke. It's not like kind of taking off some dust or something. It's taking off like plain shavings almost. And this has not been sharpened. This is just how it came from the factory and I've already you know, done some scraping with it. So you have two edges here that you can scrape with and they can be sharpened. You often wanna use the back of your knife to push on like this. And even if you don't cut yourself on those edge at 90 degree edges, it's not gonna feel very good. So that's a one potential problem with this and one reason you might wanna actually round that off. But you also have this section up here. Now this is the one that I just filed and I filed it completely square. I didn't dress it or anything like that. But as you can see, it's very sharp and it's taking really nice shavings. One more option is that you can actually turn that with a burnisher and make it into like a cabinet scraper type of edge where you, you literally turn, push this over into like a little hook and that's gonna ha take more controlled um, shavings. But even just leaving it square like this, you could you know keep this part sharper and this part duller. I know a lot of people are into their ferro rods, so you could keep you know this section for ferro rods and keep this section for woodworking. Yeah, so that, that's a pretty neat trick, and you know you may never want to use it or need to use it. I mean, the part about turning an actual burr on here, but it's there, you know, if you want to, and you can always do it temporarily. You know, you could put turn a burr on here, use it for a while, and then dress that off so you can go back to using the knife and pushing on it with your thumb. The most non-negotiable mod for this knife is this tip. As soon as I saw this tip, I was just like, that's got to go. 
This is so much better. I won't know what I think of this knife until I use it more. It's definitely a capable little knife. I'm not into this idea that everything has to be overbuilt for the like worst possible scenario because you just end up with these clunky, thick knives. I don't like them. Not that I wouldn't mind if this was more robust. That's not really the point. It's an affordable knife that I can throw in my pocket and not worry about too much. You know, it's, it's inexpensive enough that it's not that big of a deal if I break it. Again, I'm not always thinking like, oh, what if, you know, I'm in this like survival scenario or something. Well, I'll just use a stone tool because I can do that. And I can probably, even if I break this, I can probably salvage some part of the tip and use it. So that's it. I, I like this knife way better now already. <laughs>